Hey, what's up? Thanks for rocking with your boy. It's Chief Caesar here. So, was watching the Dallas game last night. I watched a review. I watched the. Um, I watched the every quarter of it <laughs> multiple times. You know, so I got a pretty in, in depth, you know, analysis that I'll be covering later. I got to write down my notes, reevaluate things, no different than the coaches will be doing. You know, so and the injury bug hit us. You know, we are too familiar with that here in uh, Cowboys Nation for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, it is what it is. But at the same time, I hope you, none of these injuries are very pressing or, you know, severe or long lasting. You know, the first one I like to mention is my boy, because we've been banging on the table from Randy Gregory for quite some time. And Jerry Jones did definitely, you know, tilt his hat, you know, at the Cowboys Nation and held on to our dude. And as you can see, he's been nothing but productive every time he hits the field. You know, so he's definitely one of those guys we want to return as well as Neville Gallimore because he was starting to be a premier standout defensive tackle in this league. Definitely on this team. You know, you've seen him slice through a couple times. You see a lot of people have a lot of difficulty with him, you know. <clears throat> and he's very intuitive in that position, though, different than Randy Gregory is. The, the natural ability of those dudes and the physical strength and tenacity and the heart that those dudes show on the field is starter material. You know, that's what it's about. You know, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, you know, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I wasn't going to throw this in there, but no, I just feel like you should have a little, a little bit about my credentials. I've been playing with the varsity team ever since I was a sophomore in high school. You know, I didn't go to college and play. I was too busy trying to make money and, you know, do the young man thing. So that's what that was. But, yeah, I played quarterback, cornerback, wide receiver. All of them unofficially but all against the varsity team from a young age, so I have a lot of depth of knowledge and experience in those fields. And I, was, I wish I had a highlight tape of that, man. But, you know, a lot of people, cell phones were not the big thing when I was in high school. You know, I'm a little older. So if you had a cell phone, you probably had a beeper. You know, I'm going to just put it that way and I'm leave it at that. You know, but I'm very well known in my city for my skill set and my talent, you know, on the field and on the courts, you know, so that's what that is. But yeah, Neville Gallimore, you might have a hyperextended elbow or dislocated elbow. Either one, it takes about the same amount of time to heal. You know, he's a young guy, so I suspect that he'll be on the shorter end of that recovery process, God willing. And our boy Randy Gregory has some kind of foot injury. You know, I don't know if it's a road ankle. You know, when they cowboys say foot injury, you never really know what it is. <laughs> you know, so it could be like a road ankle. It could be... Um, I don't think it's anything like a hairline fracture or anything like that. I doubt that. I think that would be more pressed about a matter like that. And they'll handle it and approach the media a little differently. Just based on all my years watching Cowboys media. And, you know, from inside, not the outside media. Like those three-letter, four-letter networks. When, you know, I'm not even going to mention them because that's what we're here for, to cut them out of this and give our boys the intel that they need to, you know, get better at what they're doing. You know, outside of the coaches, we get a lot of fresh perspectives, a lot of fresh eyes on the situation. And being the largest fan base, they give us a lot of versatility in that. You know, some of us really have good insightful information. You know, um, the other guy who was hurt is, let me see, it was uh, Turner. I think it was Malik Turner, if I'm not mistaken. Check my little cheese sheet. Yeah, that was Malik Turner that was injured. He was injured in the end zone. It looks like he rolled his ankle. So it's probably um, it's probably just a sprained ankle. They're going to probably call it something different, but it's probably just a sprained ankle. As you know, if you play basketball for any of the time or any sport, sprained ankles, they're not the worst thing that can happen to you. They don't feel good. There's a little bit of tenderness, you know, muscle strain, maybe a little bit of uh, fiber separation. And no different interior muscles during a hard workout. Let's take a little while for that to heal up. But it should be back up and going. Shouldn't be a real big issue. Me, I do have him on my uh, depth chart. And me personally, I will put Malik Turner right behind Cedric Wilson. That's just for my 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 eyes. Um, I do like actually B. Smith, number eighty. I think he's a a pretty good standout here. You know, and not so much in the um, in the training camp. But in the real games, I think that's where a lot of our guys are picking up and really wanting to show what they have, what they do have to realize. You know, it's cut season. So you got to show this in training camp and in the game. You know, you probably go on different levels, but in the game, you definitely want to show up. And I think um, 
B. Smith definitely had a chance to do that. Just number 80 on a wide receiver. He kind of looks like a tight end or something like that. But he has wide receiver speed, and he does have, you know, decent hands. Brandon Eagles is also a guy like, I think his number is 83. I think he would be, if you, a lot of people probably want to kick Noah Brown off the bridge. I think Noah Brown is a very solid guy. I will keep him. You know, any any receiver after number three on my team, I will put them on special teams and develop their toughness, their toughness and just overall, you know, teach them how to leverage themselves when they're running, tackling, or doing whatever they're doing. You know, I think that's a good training and proving ground to keep your guys around and not have them on the uh, practice squad, you know, because, you know, people snatch people off the practice squad and you don't want to be in no one of those types of things <clears throat> if, if you can avoid it if these are players that you're actually looking at developing and potentially taking on roles in the future. Or just being excellent subs. I mean, personally, I don't think we really need more than maybe seven, six, seven uh, wild receivers. And anybody that they're, that they're uh, Gallup, you know, you should be you should be on that special teams crew. I think we have to do, actually do the same thing with cornerback. And Dak Prescott, let me also mention that. Dak Prescott was back out here throwing the heat. You know, I am in Texas. I'm not in Dallas, but it's only like a couple, about three hours away. Been off as you drive, maybe two and a half <laughs> for, for your boy. But yeah, like I like I thought it was before. Dak is gonna be fine. You know, I think he's kind of gonna weigh it out, see how he feels before he decides when he's gonna get back in this game. And I think he's, I think he, he should probably already be cleared to play. I think he probably just strained something. You know, like a slight pull. And if you're a point thing, I'm sure you know how that feels. It's uncomfortable, but it's not something that could. That would I think would completely stop you. It would slow down, you know, your uh, your process in that range of motion, whether it be throwing or running, whatever it is. But you know, just a little bit of discomfort there. And I don't think you want to take quarter zone shots <laughs> to, in order to uh, play in these games. Because that's definitely not the way to go. You want to get your get your body the proper time to heal, and not you know, have to worry about inflammation and icing stuff down, and you know, causing any kind of other issues down the road or overcompensating to some other part of your body, you know how that stuff works. You know, you mess up one leg, you lean on the other one, and you develop some kind of problem with that leg because it's not used to handling all that pressure, you know. You don't want to, you know, deal with that type of stuff if you can avoid it. And actually, it was a good showing for both Garrett Gilbert and Ben DiNucci. I think Ben DiNucci had the better of those two performances, but Garrett Gilbert did definitely step up. And you got to keep in mind that Garrett Gilbert doesn't have a lot of NFL experience. That's where Ben DiNucci doesn't either. but. You know, I think he came through a more pronounced system and has a little bit more of the wisdom. I think he actually played with a lot of heart in that game. So I'm actually pretty proud of his development. But I'm going to go ahead and leave leave this here, cut this short, and I'll get back to you all with some more information. My actually full breakdown of my roster projection. And that will change, you know, as fluid as, you know, these guys perform. And I see different traits out of them. And I got probably got to watch that, rewatch that Cardinals-Cowboys uh, game a couple times to, get a little bit more into that and I might even go back and watch the Pittsburgh thing again but once again subscribe like comment share thanks for hanging with your boy and look out for your boy you know it's free to do it I'll let you